Okay, welcome everyone for this partner webinar of CXO, where we will focus on our newest release 6.4. It will also give you a sneak peek of uh, what's upcoming after 6.4. Um, today I'm presenting together with Alexandra. Let's see, yes. So my role is, uh, or my name is Lars van Megen. Uh, I recently joined the CXO team um as a partner manager um this role actually means that i'm the first contact person for all the existing partners in the region and i'm looking for uh other partners as well um and maybe alexandra can introduce herself as well shortly hi alexandra Verlaan, work with cxo as customer engagement manager and principal consultant work with cxo for over five and a half years i will make sure to show you all the new features of 6.4 later this webinar yeah maybe it's good to mention that uh, everyone is muted for the moment so questions can be asked by the chat window and we will see at the end of the uh, session which questions are not answered yet so we will uh, walk through them at that uh, moment um this session of today is actually a similar session as we did with customers uh, last week uh, but today we will focus more around what's in it for me from a partner point of view. Um, and then we will focus mostly in the, on the CXO catalog. And after that, we will take a look at the other new features that are there and uh, what's upcoming in uh, what we call version 7.0. So um, until now, or until release 6.4, um, the majority of our customers were using customized reports. An example that you see here on the left, but already uh, some time ago, we produced a couple of what we call standard templates, um, 18, which are available at the moment within CXO. Those templates are often used as a kind of inspiration or starting point, but not the end point or not the end dashboards that customers are using. So um, what we want to do is go to a next step, a next level, and to see, okay, how can we share those best practices and the real dashboards that customers are using uh, in the whole ecosystem? So one of the instruments to uh, share that knowledge and share uh, the best practices that customers see is the user groups that we have. So we have user groups in the Netherlands, in the United States, in Germany, and in the UK. And uh, recently also, yeah, in Germany. So um, these user groups all also have the the intent of sharing best practices um, but we wanted to bring something that will enable it also from a technical point of view uh, how to share those uh, dashboards in the whole ecosystem um, so that's why we, we came up with what we call cxo catalog nowadays so cxo catalog is an uh, instrument to promote sharing of uh, best practices and dashboards and visualizations um, it's part of the platform you can find it via a new website that you see here below um, on that website you will find the reports that are created and published by cxo customers and partners so there are three parties that will source the reports within cxo catalog um, but a very important one is are the partners of course um, the third aspect, which is really important for the catalog, is the possibility to provide feedback. So uh, feedback uh, mostly comes from customers. They can give feedback at what do they like in a report and what maybe they don't like. Um, and you can imagine that maybe in the next step, maybe you present a dashboard for the first time within the catalog. But after some feedback, you can even improve the dashboard and maybe republish it again if you would like. So when we take a look at the catalog and the reports that are there, um, it will also maybe require some, require some investment from a partner point of view. Um, not always, because maybe you've already built some reports that you would like to publish within CEO catalog. Then from that point of view, there are not, there's not that much time uh, investment needed. But maybe you have some reports in mind that you would like to build and publish in the uh, CXO catalog. Well, there are a couple of reasons why you could uh, do that. Uh, you see them here um, written, also from a customer point of view. But if you mention a couple from uh, a partner, well, maybe the first one is showcasing your industry expertise. Um, 
maybe you are uh, active within a certain industry. If I take, for example, the financial industry, financial services, um, reports are required in that industry with a certain way of presenting numbers um, quite rigid, I would say. Um, and maybe those, that's what you already have in place. And then the CISO catalog is a perfect place to uh, showcase your expertise uh, in, that, uh, in that industry. Um, a second one is also building up your CXO expertise. By building these uh, reports, uh, probably maybe in uh, cooperation with the CXO team, you can continuously build up your knowledge around CXO and uh, building reports. And the third one, but not least, is the uh, opportunity that will bring uh, to maybe have some extra leads or new business in the future. Um, when reports are published within the CXO catalog, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, when a customer downloads those reports and they will mention to CXO, well, we want to go dive deeper into this uh, report and want to take contact with the partner, we can bring you at the end in contact with that customer that would like to have uh, contact with you. So um, these are a, a couple of uh, reasons why you should or why you could think of investing time to create reports and publish them in the catalog. So how does it work? Um, for the moment, this is the process, uh, how, how it will work on a short term. So what we would like to see is a couple of screenshots of, dash, of, the, of the dashboard that we are talking about um, and some user stories that will explain, okay, which roles are uh, do exist within this context and what will the users do within that dashboard? Where will they look at? Where will they provide maybe context to the numbers? Um, what is the logical flow within that dashboard? Um, when we have that information, we will rebuild the dashboard in a generic application. So it is ready to publish in the catalog. Um, so it will always be in cooperation with the CXO team uh, for now. That's actually the talking part from my uh, side. Uh, Alexandra will now dive into the product itself. Yes. So what I will do, I first want to show you the CXO catalog website. So the website is catalog.cxosoftware.com. As you can see here, I'm in and I have my account in the catalog. I can look at all the reports that have been provided by customers and also partners for the catalog. Every month, we want to add new reports to this catalog. We can search for reports. There are different categories for reports. And here are some of the examples. My sales by destination. There's 13 months rolling for split dimensions. For example, nice company overview can be used as a homepage. A trend dashboard, but also management information. And we've got a second page with some more reports. So here are reports that are available for you to load into your CXO application. I want to go back to the first report that we've just looked at. That's my sales by destination. I want to look into this report in a bit more detail. So I'm going to click on this and it opens up the details of this report. This is a report that has been presented by Simrise during our Agora 2018 event in Amsterdam. I like this report and I would like to add this report to my webinar application. At the bottom, you find the details of the application where I want to add this report to. I'm going to agree with the privacy policy. I'm going to add this to CXO. It will now open up my webinar application and I can log on. Immediately, the CXO designer is opened in the webinar application. When you're on version 6.4, this allows you to read the CXO catalog reports. On the right hand side, you see the steps, a wizard to fill in the details of this report. 
So I need to select the main source system of my report. In my example, that is the EPM source system. Now the next settings are, are to define what account do I want to use? What dimension do I want to use for my tiles? So let's click on next. My sales account, I want to use my net sales account. So I can search for my net sales account. Now, of course, the search is done inside your own application based on your own EPM source. So the dimension that contains my regions in this demo environment, it's the entity dimension. And now I have to add the details for the four tiles. So for North America, I wanna choose United States of America. For South America, I'll choose South America. For Europe, I have the entity Europe. And for Asia Pacific, I can select Asia. Now, it's asked, what do I want to show in my pie chart? In this example, I can look at the sales per, per product, but I don't want to show my products in this case. I want to show the customer dimension. So I'm going to add the customer dimension, and now I can create the report. The report is now being generated, now being created in my webinar application and it's now part of my application my sales by destination it's a free format report that means i can still edit the layout if i want to add for example africa i can add a new tile to this report i can change whatever i want in the report this is now part of my application and of course, I can change the title. I can position it in the menu and I can give security to make sure people can look at this report. This is an example of the CXO catalog. This is once more the URL to the catalog. Um, Besides the CXO catalog, added some more features in CXO in version 6.4. We already had the pie chart in CXO and we've now introduced donut charts. In a previous version, we introduced the image control. You don't need to use now a web view control to be able to add an image to CXO. We have the image control. But now in 6.4, we've also added the navigate to function for the image control, which allows you to link to either a report or a URL. We've also added various in bars and lines charts and also ranking lists. I want to show all these to you in my application. So I'm back in my webinar application. And I first want to start with the donut. I've prepared some, of course. So the corporate summary report is a report that we um, is based on an existing report that we created for a prospect. At the bottom, you will see the donut charts. So let's now take out, as an example, the first, the fourth pie. Let's remove this. So now I've got these pie charts. I've got three pie charts, and I want to add a fourth pie chart to my report. I want to have a pie chart for small business. So edit layout, and let's add the pie chart to my report. You see it's pie slash donut chart. It's always added to the left top of my report and I can drag it now to where I want to show it. Oh. Enlarge that a bit. And this is my pie slash donut chart. 
When I save and exit, the report is opened again. And on the settings on the right hand side of my screen, all of the parameters will show of all the objects that have been added to this report. Let's look at the pie donut chart. I need to add the content. What do I want to show in this donut? I want to show my products. So let's add the pie source to my report. And now I also want to show, of course, the exploded item. It's a big report, so I have, need to have a little bit of patience for it to load. So now it's an ordinary pie chart as we all know it. Let's now show the exploded item. The exploded item will show the values of my list that is used for pie source. And I want to show small business. Then how do we change now this into a donut? Because we already know the pie chart, but we don't want to show the pie chart. We want to show the donut. So when I go to the layout, I can choose now donut chart. And I choose the donut chart. My pie chart is changed into a donut. But what more can we do to this donut object? I don't only want it to show the donut. I want to show in the middle the small business. So when we look here at the content, we have the labels, formats, and colors. So I can then say for my central value, I want to show the exploded item. And I want to show this in percentages. I'm still looking at my labels. I don't want to show my labels of the pie of the donut. So therefore, the pie data labels, I can then change and change that into none. And when I change that into none, it will not show anymore my labels. So this is how you can easily create a donut chart. Next to the donut chart, I want to take you to our clickable items. These reports that I'm showing you are part of your training environment. All of our partners have their own training environment. So for example, training.webinar.cxosoftware.com for you will be your training.partnernames.cxosoftware.com. And all of these reports that I'm showing you today are part of the folder new features, new feature 6.4. In case you can't remember the URL or the username or password for your training environment, please do not hesitate to send an email to Lars. So in my Navigate 2, my images. On the right-hand side, we've added some images to my report. Let's look. At the image for the PL, it's image one. And in the PL, I can now add this image, this sorry, this link. And this link can either be a web address or a report. So let's say we want to add a web address. The report that we have just worked on before, when you click on see so designing, you can see our recent reports. So for example, the corporate summary that we looked at has report number 1474. Let's use this URL and use that in our clickable images. So when I'm in my clickable images, I want my PL. If I click on my PL, I want to open the donut, open the donut. So a profit and loss. And I can now, when I add it as a web address, I have the option to open it in a new window pop-up. And of course, this can only be tested in a web, so therefore I need to switch to the web to show you 
what happens when I now click on PNL. And as you can see, I've added the, the administration. It's now opening up the link in a new window. So this is one of the things that we've introduced in 6.4, the clickable image. Now I want to show you one of the items that we've added is also the variance coloring for graphs. Of course, we can use that in our predictive uh, analysis. So if we would look at one of our problems and loss with prediction reports, you can see these are the coloring. But now what if we would want to create a trend graph in a multiple bars and lines report? Just add a new report, let's call it trends. And I'm going to select my multiple bar and line chart. And in my multiple bar and line chart, I want to now show the variance between actual and budget. So in my chart, I want to select not the months, but I want to select a rolling. That's my 12 time series 12 that shows me a 12 months rolling. And for the bars, I'm going to create a new list. So for the bars, I'm going to create a report list. And a new list, that's the bar. That's my trend. The trend of the category dimension. At the bottom, you will see the content. So this is my new bars list. And let me show this to you. I can add my actuals. And I can, of course, also add my budget to this list. So now I have both my actual and budget in my bars. But I don't want to show the actuals and budget. I want to show the variance. And to be able to show the variance, I'm going to create a formula in my bars and lines chart. This is going to be the item label. I'm going to change into variance. And I'm now going to add the formula. And the formula is my actual minus my budget. I can, of course, choose for the summation formula, but I'd rather take the variance formula because the variance formula allows me to do conditional formatting. Actual minus budget. And as you can already see, I can choose now. This is new because we used to have this was a list of items that you can choose from. We've now made it more visible. We've visualized it. And this is new variant style in bar and line charts. So I want to use the variant style in my bars. So my actual minus my budget. And of course, I don't want to show the actual budget itself. So I'm going to make those invisible. And now in my graph, I can see the variance, the variance of my actual minus my budget. And if I want to look at the account, the account that I'm currently looking at is my EBITDA. And of course, you can, we've done this for a lot of customers with a lot of Q calculations, but now by introducing this feature, you don't need, have to create any difficult graphs anymore. And of course, to make this complete, we can, of course, move the legend to the bottom and make sure to put at the 8%. And we've got a great trend graph now. So besides the coloring of the variance in bars and lines charts, we also have introduced ranking lists. In the past, we've used a lot of uh, ranking lists. And ranking lists, we could only do using a MNIC statement. Let's create a new ranking report. And I'm going to create my ranking report in a new, in a free format report. Because what I want to do, I want to create a report where I'm going to show you my top th three entities. 
And based on those top three entities, I want you to show the, to show you the products. So a new free format report. And I'm first going to start with a table. And when I add the table, it's only three entities, so this should be okay. Um, I personally don't like to show borders. I'm going to tick the show border, so I don't want to show a border. But we've introduced in a previous version to grow vertically. What does that mean, grow vertically? That when you have more members in your rows than currently the table can contain, Saying the table will grow. So that means when drilling, the table will grow and the items below the table will move lower. Let's look at that. So let's look at my table. And I'm going to add now ranking, a ranking list to my rows. So in the columns, let me see what I'm going to use in the columns. I have a 12 month list with total and average which I'm going to select my columns. And for my rows, I'm going to create a new list. Let's look at the report list. I'm going to create a ranking for the entities. In the list type, we already know we have our normal list, our MDX list, our dynamic lists, and now we've introduced the ranking list. And I can now rank based on my entity dimension. So what do I want to show? I want to show the entities based on my parent member. So on the entity that is in my point of view, and I don't want to show my base members, but I want to show the first children level. And I just want to show the top three items. I can decide whether I want to include the other in total. The preview is always shown on the right. And then I can say whether I want to look top to bottom or bottom to top. Let's choose top to bottom for the first table. This is my list and I can use my selected list. Now in my first table, what you will see, this, the entities are now ranked based on September 2017. So this is my ranking. What you also see is one of the items that we've added in a previous version that is the column selector i want to show you that in case you haven't seen that before the column selector allows you to combine two columns and allows you now to show one of the columns and not both so now what more what do i want to do i'm not sure what account i'm looking at so therefore, I'm going to add the item selector to my first table. And in the item selector, I'm going to choose a simple row list with some of my PL accounts. And as a default selected item, I want to show my gross margin. So now, whenever the report is open, the gross margin account is shown and the ranking is done based on the entity dimension on September 2017. But what if I want to look at the children of Asia? Can I rank those as well? Yes. Let's now add through the rules because it's a dynamic list. And as we know from MDX and descendants and children and base list, you can't edit anything directly in this list. You need to work through rules. So look at one of my rules. And I want to add a drill to anything that is not the last item. So when it doesn't equal the last item, I want to add a drill. And I want to add a new link list, a new drill list that we're going to add. This drill list, I'm going to give, create a ranking list again. Again, on the entity dimension. And now I do want to show my base members number of items to show can be 10 that's fine i do want to show the other but i don't want to show the total because that's already the item that is showing let's see let's now look at my table 
And as you can see, I can now drill into the details of Asia, South America, and Europe, my top three. And I can see the details. And as you can also see, my table is growing, is growing beyond the height that I've put in the template layout or the report layout. Now I want to add another table to this report where I'm going to show my bottom products, my bottom 10 or whatever products I wanted to add. So I'm going to go to edit layout. In the edit layout, I'm going to add another table. Let's add table two. And I'm going to have table two listen to the first table. And also, I don't want to show the border. I do want to grow to vert vertically. So what I'm going to show my table two, my table two, I'm going to use the same columns list. And for the rows, I'm going to create a ranking list that is now based on my product dimension. So it's my row rank product dimension. So and again, list type ranking, my dimension that I want to show is my product dimension. And now I don't want to show my top 10, but I want to let me show my the, the bottom seven. And I do want to show the other, and of course, the total of the base members. Let's save and let's use this list. So now in my bottom table, I can see these are the products. So if I change to South America, I want to see the details of South America, my products. But now I want to make sure how do I know my second table is based on South America. Let's show you a little trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an item selector to my second table. Let's create a report list for the item selector where I want to show the current entity. It doesn't matter which um, dimension I'm using. I need to use any dimension because I'm only using this as a trick to show a title. It's to show the title in this black box because that's where I want to see the title. So let's open up this item selector that I've added. And the only thing that I'm doing is adding an item and I'm going to change the item label. So I'm going to show product ranked for this entity. So now I have a title for my second table. And of course, I want to make it look a little bit nicer because I want to have the both tables aligned similar. And therefore, I'm going to change in label formats and colors. I'm going to change my label column width to 300 pixels for both tables. So here you see the two report, two tables that are linked. When I go to my China sales, I can see the products ranked for China sales. My Japan sales. I can even look at other and see the details for the other of my product dimension. So these are examples and these are the new features that we've introduced in version 6.4. And all of you, please be aware that your training environment has been upgraded to version 6.4, where you can play with version 6.4, even in combination with the catalog. If you would go to catalog.cxosoftware.com and create your account, this will allow you to load the reports, the catalog reports, into your CXO training environment so you can show that to your customers. Yeah. Okay. Um. So besides next to version um, 6.4, we're working on release 7.0. Let me 
from current stack. This is something that we're looking at is a new login page. The login page for version 7.0 looks something like this. Your username, you have a selector to login. It's new, it's more refreshing than what we currently have. Besides our new login page, we're also looking at a more in a new look and feel. So as you can see here, we have in the title, Nunc SB Bendem, below the title, you can see, you can have a choice. You can either show the point of view as it was in version six, or you can make it more textual, where it says in euros for common communications on September, 2017. We've moved our reports, our report menu is also always at the top of our screen. But we've moved those. We've created a, at the hamburger, at the left top, that allows you now to look not only at your menu, but you also have an option now to look at the recent reports that you've looked at. You can add now reports as favorites to CXO in version 7.0, but also storyboards will be in this report finder. In here you can see you can also add now a, a subtitle to your report. The subtitle is based on your point of view. Planned sales in 2017 will increase. And what we've also done up until now in version 6.4, we still have that, our scaling is at the bottom of your report. However, Everything else from the point of view is at the top of your report. So you've now included the scaling as part of the point of view. And you can see the M for millions. And when you click on that M, you get the skill and precision. And it allows you to change your skill and precision. The same as you would normally, how you can normally change your point of view. In version 7.0, oh, we want to introduce, besides what we currently have, our comments, our point of view comments, our inline comments. We're introducing annotations. Annotations where it allows me to put an annotation on, for example, direct cost or in salaries and add those annotations to this particular table. For storyboards, we've also have a new look and feel. As storyboards become a part of our report finder, we needed a different way to present them. You can see here different storyboards. You can see you can also now create a folder for the storyboards, for example, for Asia or for Europe or the storyboards itself. And when you play a storyboard, when you click on a storyboard, you get your play button, your export button, and you can see a first impression of the reports that are part of your storyboard. Of course, you can open up all of the reports if you want to, if you would click on show all 33 reports. And what we're also introducing, as you can see at the top of this screen, you can see I'm looking now at the second report of 23 pages in the storyboard. If I want to, if I want to move to another report, I can do that in the top of my screen. And also we're introducing these, these sliders that allows you to go left and right in your storyboard, to swipe through your storyboard. And the conversation view, we will move to the right hand side. So it looks more like the chat window of, for example, LinkedIn. Okay, thank you, Alexandra for this uh, deep dive into CXO. Uh, we started today with introducing the catalog, why it's there, because basically we want to promote sharing in the whole ecosystem involving partners, customers, and CXO uh, themselves. Um, afterwards, we've seen the catalog ourselves uh, presented by Alexandra and other news futures closing with uh, what's in the newest release 7.0 in the future. Um, I want to thank you all for uh, being in this session. Um, I will add my contact details on this last slide and we will uh, share these slides with you uh, after this uh, session. Um, yeah, so far no questions. So uh, bye.
see you uh, hopefully in the next session in the next webinar and uh thank you for being uh logged in thank you for your time bye 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 bye